Hey guys, what's up? John here from flymikealpha.com, coming to you live from Sun and Fun 2019. We're here at the Continental booth, and we have a very cool cutaway of a Continental engine, and we're gonna talk today about what all the parts and pieces are inside of an engine that you typically don't get to see when you pop the cowling off of an airplane. So, what's the life cycle of a little molecule of air as it goes through your engine? Basically, it would start down here where the carburetor would be, and there's not a carburetor on this one, but what this is is your oil pan. So all of your oil, much like an oil pan on your car, is sitting right inside of here. And your carburetor bolts on there, it would come out here, you'd have an air filter and you'd have a fuel line going in. The air is going to flow in through the air filter, up into the carburetor, where it's going to mix with the fuel coming in, and then the fuel and air is going to flow up through the oil pan, through these intake pipes, intake manifold, however you prefer to call it. The purpose of this is you're mixing cool air and cool fuel through your oil pan. So that's actually dissipating some of the heat within your engine. It's helping to cool your oil. Not all engines have oil coolers on them, and this is a great way to cool oil. It's a great technology from about like circa 1930, 1940. Not much has changed in a really long time. So you have that fuel and air flowing up through this intake manifold coming up into here, and as it comes into your cylinder head, so we look down inside here, we can see a valve and a valve spring. So the air is going to flow through this intake pipe, go past this valve because we're going to have a rocker arm that pushes that valve open. This valve opens, the air gets drawn into the cylinder. We can see here we have our piston, and then we have our connecting rod. We have our crankshaft right inside of here. And as this crankshaft is spinning around, the piston's going to be moving back and forth. It's going to be drawing that air and fuel in. Then that valve will close. We have a sealed chamber at that point. We're going to squeeze the air with the piston coming up. And once you have that fuel and air squeezed together, then that is when your spark plug will ignite the fuel and air charge and make fire. Of course, fire is hot. It's going to expand the air and push the piston back down, and that is your power stroke. Now once you have that burnt fuel and air that is is useless at that point. It makes sense that your piston's all the way down here. It's going to then open up the exhaust valve via that rocker arm that pushes on the exhaust valve. The piston's going to come up and squeeze all that expelled or all that burnt air and fuel out, push it out through your exhaust manifold, exhaust pipe. Now, this engine here does not have exhaust pipes on it or exhaust manifold, but this is where you would see that rusty brown pipe on your motor, and that's the exhaust because it's going to be very hot, so you tend to get a little more rust and a little more uh, oxidation on the exhaust side than you do on the intake side. Standard aircraft spark plug, your B-nut would normally go on there and that would be where your wire harness would come off of. Coming back up here, we can see what a piston actually looks like on our engine. We see these little ridges in here. And if you think about a piston moving inside of a cylinder, it makes sense that some gases would be able to skip by. It's hard to make a tight seal with this piston in a cylinder and still have it slide freely without too much friction. So we put piston rings here, and that's when you hear about piston rings, compression rings and oil rings that separate the compression and the oil from all the oil in the crankcase and the oil and compression here. Now, those rings can occasionally wear out, and as those rings wear out, you may get blow-by. That's when you have low compression on your cylinders. You get blow-by, and you have that expanding gases, fuel and air burning, blowing past the cylinder into the crankcase, and that's when you would have your breather tube. That's when you get crankcase pressure, and that's that breather tube that usually comes out right along the side right down there, and that's where all that oil is dripping out to on the ground in your hangar. Once you, uh, especially if you overfill the oil, say to seven quarts or eight quarts instead of just six. Now on the back side of our motor is normally where we would have our magnetos. We can see we have our oil filter up here, the spin on oil filter. We would normally have our magnetos on either side here. And those magnetos, like we said, would have the wiring harness that would come around to our spark plugs. On the other side here, of course, we have the very familiar oil dipstick tube. So that was where you'd be checking your oil. And on the back side here, we might have something like a fuel pump and an oil line coming off for oil pressure or maybe an oil cooler and just general accessories are going to be on the back of your motor here. Again, Magneto goes right there. That's the basics of your engine, especially what the insides of your engine look like. Hopefully that gives you a little bit better idea when you're looking at the cylinder to visualize what's happening inside of the cylinder. If you have any questions on it, leave it in the comments below or just click on ask a question at flightmikealpha.com at the top of the page. Of course, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you guys have not already. Come by and see us at Sun Fun, booth D64, Hangar D, booth 64. We'll see you guys in the next video.